Practical Wisdom for Modern Witches with your host, the Witch of Lupin Hollow. Hello, Modern Witches. I'm Tanae Stewart, and I'm here to welcome you back to the Witch of Lupin Hollow YouTube channel. Uh, so today I'm sharing three of my favorite mini rituals that you can do in 30 seconds or less. Guaranteed. Time it. Uh, so we, a lot of times we think about our spiritual practice as something that we have to commit a lot of time to. But I actually find that mini rituals are one of the most powerful ways to really get in touch with your spirituality in a snap, in just a moment of time that you don't even have to step away from whatever you're doing, right? You don't have to step out of your mundane life. Um, I think it's really important to integrate these kinds of mini rituals into your mundane life so that your magical and mundane realities start to become one. Um, I know that that can be something that's kind of hard to envision, especially if your magical life feels very, very separate from your mundane life. Um, you know, if you are in the so-called broom closet, if you're, you know, just not public and open about your practice, it might feel like your magical life has to be separate, that it has to be something that is private, only behind closed doors kind of a thing. Um, and that is certainly, you know, one approach. But I find that the more you start to integrate your lives, regardless of who knows that they're integrated, um, you know, regardless of who knows that the little thing that you're doing while you stir your coffee or, you know, the, the meditation practice that you've started, regardless of whether they know that that's part of your spirituality, you know. And so, you know, that integration can be a very private thing um, if you so choose. But the more that you start to integrate your life so that you're practicing your spirituality every day, you're expressing your spiritual beliefs in an authentic and holistic way, um, the more that you're going to feel connected to your spirituality, to your intuition, um, and to your higher self. So mini rituals are such an awesome way to go about this because they don't require you to, you know, set aside hours or even minutes of your time. Um, you know, we have busy schedules, we're modern people, we have, you know, things to do, people to be accountable to. Um, and sometimes it can be really hard to make your spirituality a priority. So I guarantee by the end of this video, you will have three ways that you can get in touch with your spirituality in no more than 30 seconds, although you can spend more time doing them if you really do have more than 30 seconds, which I hope that you do, but it's a good place to start. So these are three of my personal favorite things that I like to do um, to just get tapped in. So number one is lighting a candle. So I've talked about this before on the channel, I think, but I find that lighting a candle, seriously just lighting a candle, is in, in and of itself a ritual. So this is a candle that I keep on my vanity, which is not my main altar, but it is sort of where I practice the most. Um, you know, it has a chair, it has a surface, um, you know, it's easy to get to, it's always available. Um, and so I have kind of a mini altar that's this candle and a couple of crystals and things. So it's just, you know, a nice glass container with a votive candle in it that I have to change regularly because I burn a lot of candles. Um, and, you know, I just always have matches nearby. And so even on the busiest morning, I always try to light a candle. I try to have that one little moment of, you know, peace and serenity. So for me, lighting the candle is not the beginning of a ritual. It is in and of itself a ritual. So for starters, right, we're just going to strike the match. So time it, here we go. <laughs> All right, so striking the match is part of the ritual, right? We watch the flame burn, we you know feel that spark of life, and then we hold it to the wick, light the candle, blow out the match, and that moment right there, that is a mini ritual. And it's one of my favorite mini rituals because it's so powerful, it's so primal, that generation of fire, the spark of fire, the spark of life, and then passing that on to the candle, lighting the candle. Um, it's this perfect moment of peace in amidst whatever else you're doing. 
And I just, I find it to be really powerful. It's such a simple thing. Um, it may or may not feel powerful to you, but I find that this is something you can do at any time, right? So even if you don't have time for any other part of your spiritual practice, right? Even if you are running late and you have to just throw your makeup on and run out the door and you'll get breakfast on the way, right? You have time to light a candle. And so a lot of times we think that like, oh, I, you know, I don't have time to like get all ready for a ritual. But just lighting that candle can be the ritual while you go about the rest of your mundane activities. Just remember to blow it out before you run out the door. <laughs> but I think it's really important to acknowledge that it's it can be as simple as that. It can be as tiny, as minuscule as lighting a candle, but you can still give yourself that just brief breath of space as the flame sparks and the candle lights to just feel at peace and connected. Um, so that's number one. Number two is holding crystals. Again, it's as simple as that. So holding crystals is, I think, the easiest way to connect with them. Um, you know, there's lots of ways you can work with crystals. You can do crystal grids. You can do, um, you know, massage with crystals. You can do all sorts of things, right? But holding a crystal is the simplest, most primal way to get in touch with the energy of the crystal. So my favorite for this are called palm stones. This is a labradorite palm stone. It's one of my absolute favorite stones. It's really, really beautiful. You can kind of see the reflection of it here. So palm stones are so called because they fit comfortably in the palm of your hand. So they are meant to be held. So, you know, you can see it just sort of nestles comfortably into your palm and you can feel, you know, the smooth stone. Um, they're perfect for sort of, you know, this motion, sort of activating. Um, and it's a really great meditation aid. So if you, you know, only have five minutes before bed or in the morning, right? And you really want to have this meditation practice, but you have a really hard time focusing, holding a crystal, especially a palm stone, is a great way to get in touch with that. So, you know, you just keep it nearby, keep it on hand, pick it up, hold it in your hands. <sighs> Take that deep cleansing breath. Feel the weight of the stone on your hands, the cool texture, and just clear your mind. This is a great tool because it sort of gets you in touch with nature through the actual crystal itself, gets you in touch with your body, you're feeling the sensation of the crystal in your hands, and it gives you something to focus on. So instead of you know letting your mind drift away to other things, you're just focusing on the feeling and the sensation and the you know energy of the crystal. Um, so you know this is something that you can do for however long you want, right? You can do it for 10 seconds, you can do it for 30 seconds, you can do it for 10 minutes, whatever you have time for and want to devote to it. But just holding that crystal in your hand and feeling its weight, there's just something really powerful about that, that it's so simple, but it's just this very visceral connection to nature to you know whatever the the beautiful stone that you've chosen is i have palm stones in labradorite in amethyst in smoky quartz um i also have like you can do the same thing with like crystal spheres crystals that have been polished into a circle um you can certainly also use raw and unpolished stones for this because they have a lot of texture and you can sort of feel the crystal points or you know whatever their shape is um, so, you know, you just have to explore what feels powerful for you. But again, it's as simple as that, holding crystals. <laughs> okay, so number three is slightly more elaborate, but I think that having some kind of intuitive divination practice every day is incredibly powerful. It's such an amazing way to get in touch with your intuition and, you know, to really start to trust your instincts. So I strongly recommend a Daily Tarot Oracle Draw. Um, this is, you know, slightly more, more in depth than striking a match, but I think that the power of a divination tool is just 
it's the only tool really that I feel is somewhat necessary, right? You don't really need any tools for your spiritual practice. Your divination practice can be as simple as taking a deep breath and asking your higher self what you need to know or your goddess or angel or whatever it is that you believe in. But having a divination tool, it sort of takes the pressure off. You know, it it makes it so that you feel like you're being guided towards something and maybe you are or maybe, you know, you're just gleaning the information that you need out of the card you've drawn or the pendulum result that you've drawn or, or whatever it is that you're working with. But, you know, for me, it's tarot and oracle and especially oracle cards. This is one of my all time favorite decks. It's called the Threads of Fate. Um, and it's just a really beautiful deck that I personally feel really connected to. So I thought we'd end this video with a little example of a daily card draw. So a daily card draw is usually a single card. Um, you're just going to shuffle the deck until you feel drawn to a card and then pull it, right? Um, you might follow that up with a little journaling practice or a little meditation or, you know, some kind of reflection on what you think the card means. Um, but, you know, it's as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. So we're just going to shuffle the cards. Not really in the frame there. So we're just going to shuffle the cards. Oh, take that deep cleansing breath and just ask, what do we need to hear today? What little mini tiny piece of insight is what we're being guided to today? We are being guided to the Magi. And this is funny because this is actually the same card I drew this morning. So apparently I really need to hear this. <laughs> um, this card is, you know, it's about inner power, it's about your inner witch, it's about trusting yourself, um, allowing yourself to be guided and to guide yourself. Um, it's a beautiful card, as are all of the cards in this deck, and hopefully you gain a little something out of hearing about that today too. Um, it's as simple as that, right? It's just a shuffle, it's drawing the card that you feel drawn to and allowing yourself to be guided by whatever insight it has to offer. So this has been three mini rituals that you can do in 30 seconds or less. Um, I want to hear what your mini rituals are, so make sure that you comment below. Have you tried any of these? Are there other mini rituals that you've started incorporating into your day? Um, and I also just want to let you know that this episode of the Witch of Lupin Hollow YouTube channel um, is brought to you by my Live Your Magical Life membership program. So this is a brand new program that I'm launching. Um, link is in the description. The program is a monthly membership uh, where you get access to live chats with me and with guest experts. Um, we're going to have resources that every month there'll be a new theme. Um, you'll get mini rituals around the theme, ways to incorporate your spirituality into your daily life, the accountability challenges within the community so that you can help yourself stay on track and maintain your daily spiritual practice, and really start integrating your magical and mundane lives. Um, so check out the membership program in the link below and let me know how many rituals are supporting you in your daily spiritual practice. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified whenever I put out a new video, which I do every week. All right, see you next week.